Well, thank you for being with us today. If you're watching online, thank you for joining us online to be a part of our worship time to get today. We're in this awesome series, and I've enjoyed it so much, where we are looking at snapshots from the life of Jesus, and we're seeing the way he lived and we're trying to figure out what we can do to live that way. And we've been asking this question every Sunday, how do we become followers of Jesus who follow through on the things that Jesus did? If we're going to follow Jesus, we need to know what he did. And then if we know what he did, we need to be sure that we are doing what he led us to do. When we follow Jesus, we go where Jesus went and we do what he did. And we're going to look at a little little part of Jesus' life today, and it causes his disciples to stop and ask him a question, because they look at his life, and they see how his life is different from theirs. They see Jesus goes, and he spends this time with his father in prayer, and, and he comes back, and he has peace where a lot of times they have fear and he loves people in a way that they can't quite love people yet. And, and so they look at Jesus' life and they th- say, wow, I, I really want what you have, Jesus. And so, so they ask him this question that, that perhaps will help them to get some of what Jesus had. And, and I think this idea of us needing what Jesus had and wanting to be like Jesus in our lives, wanting to live with that peace in our lives, wanting to live with joy that shows on our faces and in our hands and in our feet in our lives, and wanting to have that kind of love that he had for people that was life-changing love. Part of this series of the way is just what are small steps that we can do to copy Jesus so that we can be like him in that way, so that we can have the peace and the joy and the love that he had. So let's look at this episode from the life of Jesus. It's in Luke chapter two and verse one. And it says this, now Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So here Jesus is, and he's been praying in a certain place. And and this is part of how we got this idea of the challenge that Pastor Preston issued a couple of weeks ago is this, take the first 15 minutes of your day and spend that time alone with God. That is exactly copying what Jesus did, because here he is, he goes to this place where he can just spend time talking to his father, hearing from his father, and experiencing that connection that comes when you do that. And so when he gets back, one of his disciples says, hey, hey, would you teach us to pray like that? And so Jesus begins teaching them, and and what he teaches them is, is, is what we know of as the Lord's Prayer. And, and it's not the one that we said so often in Sunday school when I was a kid, because it's a little different. It's, this is another episode in Jesus' life where he's teaching them about prayer, and the prayer is a little different from what we're used to. But he starts his prayer by this. He says, when you pray, say, Father. When you pray, say, Father. As we think about prayer today and as we think about time with God, our our main theme is, is this, that we worship God. And so Jesus begins his prayer as he is teaching his disciples to pray and as he's teaching us to pray, he says, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. You begin your prayer with worship. And so Jesus, when he says, pray and begin with our Father, in in the Matthew version of this prayer that we're familiar with, we say, our Father who art in heaven, we recognize God as a Father who is so different from us, so much more powerful than us, so much more knowledgeable than us, so much more loving than us. I, if, if, if you're like me and you had a dad that loved you, that raised you, and, and that was, was, was there for you, so many times when I was a little guy, 
And there was something that was big to carry, and, and, and I couldn't carry it. My dad seemed like Superman, that he could carry whatever that big thing was. Or there was something I didn't know, and I could go to my dad, and I could ask him a question, and, and because of the years of experience and the years of learning, he knew the answers that blew my mind that someone could know this. And my dad, that I knew that he provided for me, I knew that he loved me and he showed that in the way that he he interacted with me, the way he sacrificed for me. That's what a father is. And so Jesus says, when we begin our prayer and we're thinking about worshiping God, our father, it's recognizing who he is. So I've got two things to share with us. And one is this, worship helps us remember who God is. It helps us remember who, when we sing these songs this morning about a God who loves us with reckless love so much that he would chase us down when we were far away from him, that reminds us how much he loves us. When we sing this song about Jesus having having all sufficient merit, that means Jesus was so good. He was perfect goodness. And he offers that goodness, that merit to us through faith, that is recognizing who God is. And so many times in my life, the problems that are in my life and the challenges and the things I mess up, and and as I start looking at my life and those things just seem so huge and, and so much bigger and overwhelming and it becomes chaotic how that looks in my life and it just grows and grows the more I think about it, and it becomes this huge thing. But Jesus says, start your prayer with worship. And when you start your prayer with worship, you start seeing how big God is. You start seeing how powerful God is. You start seeing how strong God is. You start recognizing that God is the one that can speak and change everything in an instant. And so as God gets bigger in your life, your problems and your mistakes and and those things that seem so overwhelming to you get smaller and smaller. Jesus wants us to worship God as our Father. Jesus wants us to remember who God is because when we see who God truly is, he is so much bigger and so much stronger than whatever it is that's so big in your life right now. When we worship God, we remember who he is as father. And then when we worship God, we remember who we are. And I don't remember, don't think of it this way because, because a lot of times I have things in my life that remind me how much I don't know. There are answers and, and, and problems that come up and, and, and I don't know. And I don't know. And, and, and it seems so many questions coming at me at once. And, and I don't know. And, and then I mess things up. And there are times in my life where I think I am making the smartest of decisions. And then as time goes on, I realize just how foolish I was. And so all of this stuff makes me have a picture of myself as helpless and weak and, and messed up. Which, which is all true. But the picture that worship shows us is this. It shows us that God is our father. That we can be a child, we can be his child. The Bible says in John chapter one that as many people as believed in Jesus... And as many people as called on his name, he gave the right to be children of God. And if you believe in Jesus, and if you have called on him to save you of your sins, and if you've asked him to be the leader of your life and told him that you want to follow him, that makes you God's child. And so uh, while I am not wrong in seeing myself as, as weak and as, as sinful and as, as not knowing. 
how much better is it for me to see myself as a child of God, a father who loves me, a father who wants to put his strength and his knowledge and his love into my life. It changes my whole outlook on who I am and who I can be because his strength in me can give me strength. And there are times where he gives me knowledge that didn't come from my little head. And there are times he helps me love people in ways that I never would have loved them without his love coming into my life and making me different. When we worship God, we remember who he is and we also remember who we are as his children. All right, I wanna talk a little bit more about Jesus, what he teaches us in this, this worship in our prayer. Look at the next verse. It says, and he said, we just read this. He, and he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. And this, this hallowed word here is, is not a word we use a whole lot here in Southeast Missouri. But when I read that word, I get the idea of honored. God, we want your name to be honored. And God, we want your name to be viewed as special. And we want people to praise your name and to worship your name. We sang that good song, the second song that Tyler led us in about about magnifying, God be magnified in our life. God be magnified in our church. We want that. And, And so when we sing that song, we're basically praying what Jesus said. God, we want your you to work in our world in such a way that people honor and that people respect and that people praise and that people see your name as special. God, would you work in our world in that way? God, would you work in my life so that I I hallow, so that I honor your name more? God, would you work in the lives of people that I'm praying for who are struggling with things and And God, would you work in their lives so that they come to understand the comfort that comes from your Holy Spirit, so that they come to understand the peace that comes from knowing your love and your truth? God, would you hallow your name in our presence? And then Jesus says this, he says, your kingdom come. And we recognize God when we pray that and we praise God when we pray that and we recognize that he is the king of all creation, of all the universe. He sits on the throne and nothing happens without him seeing and nothing happens without his knowing and that he truly is the king that brings righteousness and peace and will ultimately bring righteousness and peace in a way that is so far beyond what we can know. So Jesus teaches us, when you start your prayer, start it with worship. And when you worship, you remember who God is and you remember who you are. So so then Jesus uh, uh, says, um, gives us another teaching on worship. And I want us to look at that in John chapter four, verse 23 says this, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. So Jesus is speaking to, if you're familiar with the story, Jesus is speaking to a Samaritan woman and he's talking to her about what true worship is and, and how people should and, and should worship the Father and how they will truly worship the Father. And I wanna focus just in on this part of worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And I'm not gonna tell you everything that worshiping in spirit and truth means, but I think there's a couple of little lessons we can learn from this, or maybe big lessons, that can really help us in our worship. And the the first is this, that we, we worship in truth. And that is we take the truth that comes from God, we take God's truth and we let it into our lives. And, and you've, 
you've done that today. You've come to church. You, you are wanting us to talk about the scriptures and, and you're wanting to hear from that and you're wanting to apply it to your life. You're wanting to let God's truth in. When you go to life groups, you are, are coming here and you're wanting to let God's truth come into your life. As we sang songs, we sang songs and we make sure that the songs that we sing express truth that they are accurate with the scriptures. We want to take God's truth into our lives. But Jesus says, when you worship, you're going to worship me in spirit and in truth. And so worship becomes when my spirit experiences God's truth, then I pour out my worship to God from my spirit, from my soul, so that it's a response to the wonderful truth that I have experienced. We're saying, God, be magnified in me. God, let your praise arise in me because I, I know that, that your life, I know that your son died for me. I know that you love me. I know that I'm ch your child. In spite of all my flaws, I know that I'm yours. And that makes that truth come into me. So, so, my, my challenge for us is this, respond to God's truth from your soul. Respond to God's truth from your soul. When we watch entertainers, we, we want them, we don't want them to halfway perform a song or, you know, I, I think of, of, of that idea of, of soul music and, and of a, perhaps an old blues guy and and he has the blues so much that it just from head to toe it's all over him and he just it breaks your heart to hear and 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 but you love it at the same time to see someone express whatever is in their heart with all of their being and maybe they play the guitar and it comes out of their fingers and 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 we love to watch that and can I tell you that that's what God wants for us? He wants us to express and to respond to the truth that he puts into our life. And he wants us to have an emotional response. He wants us to have a spiritual response. He wants it to come out of us. He wants us truly to respond to his truth from the depths of our spirit from our soul, putting our heart into our worship. So how do we do that? I want to talk just a little bit about that 15-minute time. So, so I have a worship challenge, and, and Pastor Preston started us on this worship challenge, and he said, every day, begin your day with 15 minutes alone with God. Um, we're going to take a test right now. How is everybody doing? Have, have it, no, we're not. But how are you doing, ask yourself that, how are you doing with that? And, and is it helping? Is it changing your life? And, and if it's not going so well, it's not too late to start or to get a little better, uh, get a few more days this week than you got last week. But every day, spend 15 minutes alone with God. Pastor Chris challenged us this way, add prayer to your 15 minutes. And uh, if you've missed these messages, go back on the church website, go back on the church YouTube or the church app, and you can watch those messages because they are really good to help get us started on this idea of following the way of Jesus. And today I'm adding this one, add worship to your 15 minutes. And by the way, on the Liberty Hill Church app, there's a, a button you could click at the top of the page there about this, this challenge that we have and the way challenge and it gives you some guidance of how to do what we're challenging you in these things. But add worship to your 15 minutes. And Jesus said, when you pray, begin your prayer with worship. So, so pray to our Father, recognize God for who he is as, as part of your prayer. And, and as you pray, pour out your heart to God, expressing how much you love him and how amazing that you think he is. So add prayer to your 15 minutes and then add worship to your 15 minutes. And then the next thing is this, add worship music to your day. Add worship music to your day. 
And now that's going to look different for all of us in different ways, depending on how you experience music in your life. If your 15 minutes is, is like mine usually is, where, where I'm very alone and I'm outside, I just sing to God. And it may be weird, but the squirrels and the birds are the only one know that I'm the weirdo out there singing. And I sing songs that have, have meant something to me in my relationship with God from years ago, or sometimes I sing a newer song. But perhaps you add music to your worship, just singing to God. Maybe you just read the words of a song that means a lot to you. Pick one that means something to you. For me, a lot of times it's, it's old hymns like, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Man, there's a song we sing here called, uh, we, we sing, all my life you've been faithful and all my life you've been so, so good. And when I sing that song here in worship with you and we sing it together, that's my old language and that's how I experience God's love. You can add worship music to your day by listening to, to recorded music. We do a cool thing here at Liberty Hill. If you haven't noticed it, it's, it's on the church app and it's on uh, the church email that you get every Wednesday. And it has a link to our Spotify uh, playlist. And you can start Wednesday morning practicing the worship songs that, that Paul and the worship team are gonna lead on Wednesday. You can have them all memorized. You can know them better than we do by the time by S Sunday comes along. And you can worship along with those songs as you drive down the street or as you, you do your dishes or whatever. Worship is so powerful and it is such a gift, or music is so powerful and such a gift that God has given us. Add music to your worship. And then the last thing is this, add, add worship or worship in your own unique way. Worship in your own unique way. So, so worship for me, a lot of times is music because I'm just kind of a music guy. But you may have a different way that you worship God. Maybe you're an outdoors guy. And so going out and, and just, just spending time in the woods is where you feel closest to God. Schedule some time, make, make an appointment so that you can just go spend that time in that place that you best worship God, it's the way that works for you. Maybe the way you worship is the way you work. And so as you do your job, you are saying to God, God, look, here I am, and, and I'm, I'm doing my job, which means serving these people, and God, I am giving it to you as an act of worship because I want to serve them in such a way that they realize that I love them and that you love them. And so God, please take the work that I do. Please take the, what I do to raise my kids or please take the way I interact with my spouse and God use it, accept it as worship. Worship in your unique way because God hasn't made us all the same and God wants your spirit the way he made your spirit, your soul, to reflect his truth back to him and to worship him and praise him. All right, so that is one part of our worship challenge, and that is for that 15 minutes. That's your alone time every day. But now I want us to, to shift gears a little bit and look at one more area of worship, and we see that in John or Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up and read. And I want us to look at these four words here, as was his custom. Jesus had a habit that every week on the Sabbath day, he would go to the synagogue and he would worship God with the other people. And so this is Jesus giving us an example and, and and all through this series of the way, we, we're looking at how Jesus lived and we're, we're just trying to add, add a little more of how he lived and a little more so that in the end and after time, we see how much it changes our life. And so Jesus, as part of his habit, as part of his custom, he would meet with other people to worship every week. And I think that's a good plan for us. 
because when we worship together, you help me worship. As we sang earlier, and, and I watched the worship team up here worshiping, and, and, and sometimes this happens, uh, what are they so excited about? Maybe I should tune in to what they're singing and what's happening so that I can, their excitement can rub off on me. Occasionally, someone in our worship services will shout and, and, and just kind of yell out something and, and as an expression because they become overwhelmed at, at whatever we're singing about. Usually, we don't get much shouting in the sermon. Now, come on, you guys could step it up a little bit. Maybe if we'd step it up preaching, Paul, they would step it up and shouting in the sermons. But, but someone will shout. And, 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 and recently, that, that happened here, and, and I was over there but I was just kind of halfway in what was happening. So, so first of all, my heart went, whoa, like that. And, and just, just for those of you, we do have defibrillators throughout the building if this is, if this is something that you, you have. But, but then it was like, wait, what, what did we just sing? Because I just missed it, what made ever someone else so, so excited. And it helped me worship. I like, uh, uh, rewound. Okay, oh, we did sing that. That was good. When I see you worship, however you worship, it helps me. It helps me focus. It helps us when we all sing together. You know, we go to ball games, and, and I was watching our Bloomfield Wildcats play volleyball this week, and, and at one point the game got tough, and, and the, the pep club starts yelling, B-H-S, and and. and there was this feeling in the room of, yeah, now we're all together. We're going to come back and whoop those Puxico Indians. And because there was something about us all being together. And how much more that we're all together praising the God who loves us, the Savior who died for us. How much more when we come together and and band together and worship like that. When we worship together, you help me. When we worship together, we make a powerful connection because it's like, it's like I'm singing to God that has come into my life and I've experienced good things and, and I'm singing that and, and then you're singing to God or, or pray, we're praying together and it's like you too, you feel that too. You've experienced God being that good too to your life. It connects us together because we have, you have a connection with Jesus and I have a connection with Jesus. And as we pull our hearts together in that connection with Jesus, it pulls your life and my life together. When we worship together, we connect together. And there's one more thing about worshiping together. And it says, when we worship together, it's not about me. It's not about me. And, and, and the temptation is that, that I want worship my way and, and that, that I want to, to, you know, want the worship experience to please me. And, and I have to realize that when we come together, I have to consider your way of worship and my way of worship. It, it's kind of like this. If we go to Cape to eat with the family, not just me by myself, but with the family, then you do kind of have to enter that negotiation about where you're going to eat. And so, you know, well, this family member doesn't like this kind of food, and this family member really loves this kind of food and always is trying to get us to go to McDonald's. And, and so, um, and, but when you have, or in a group, you have to kind of consider that. When I go to Cape by myself to eat, if I have, if I plan to spend steak money, well, then we're going to Texas, I'm going to Texas Roadhouse. Now, if I'm spending hamburger money, and, and just hold, hold on to something, I go to White Castle. Yeah. And so you see why when the family's with me, I don't get to choose White Castle. Sometimes in our worship, we have to, to love each other and we do everything we can as we plan our worship services to include uh, something for everyone. And sometimes we have to also realize that it's, it's not about me. 
and we have to try to meet each other in, in the middle and, and make it so that it is a blessing to you, that it's a blessing to me, and that it's a blessing to people that we're trying to reach who, who don't even know Jesus yet, but we're trying to help them do that. So all that to say, this worship challenge for us as a group when we come together, the first thing is this, make worship with your church family a priority. When you're scheduling your time, make worship with your church family a priority. And so many things seem important, and so many things seem like that's what we ought to do. But it is important if we are going to follow and live like Jesus lived, and if, if we're wanting him to change us to be the people like he is, then we need to do what he did. And he made worship with his spiritual family a priority. The next thing is this, worship in your unique way. If you're a shouter, please shout. Just go ahead, feel free. You don't need my permission, but go ahead and do it anyway. We want you to worship how you want to worship. If you're a loud singer, please sing loud. If you're a soft singer, it's okay to be a soft singer. Just, just be a soft singer. If as we worship, you just want to stand quietly and contemplate in the scene or, or, or the, however you're worshiping and, and just be still with God, do it. Do your way. Worship your way. However you, you want to do that. And the last thing is this. Respond to God's truth from your soul. Come to church and, and, and I pour out my soul and my spirit to God as we think about God's truth. And, and you pour out your soul and your spirit. I worry sometimes that, that we let worship in church become a spectator sport. And we see the worship team up here and they're, they're doing a great job and, and they really seem into what they're doing and we just want to watch them burn instead of burning ourselves. Let God set your soul on fire with his truth and his love. And then come to church and expect that you're going to connect with him and you're going to respond to him. And because you respond to him, it's going to help me worship. And you're going to help the person a row ahead of you worship because you respond to God in your unique way because we come together and we worship as a church family. So I began the message talking about God as a father. And I want you to know today, if, if you don't yet know God as a good father, a father that loves you, a father that wants to put his power into your life, a father that wants to help you and put his, your, his strength into your life, you can know that today. Through Jesus Christ, who died on a cross, the truth is every one of us have done things wrong. Our weaknesses and our flaws have kept us from obeying God and being who he made us to be. And because of that, it separates that relationship of God as father from us as his child. But Jesus died on a cross to take all of the wrong things that we had done on himself and make it possible so that we could be united with God as Father. And if you haven't ever talked to God and said, God, I want you to be my Father, and I want to be your child, and I believe what Jesus did on the cross was for me, and that I needed him to do it, and I believe that he rose from the dead because I know that he wanted to give me a new life and a new start. That is what God offers as Father today. So in, if you're here and today is the day you would like to pray and ask God to be your Father, and you want to start that relationship, I'm going to say a prayer in just a moment. And, and if you could pray it with me from your seat and mean it in your heart, God will come into your life and he will be your Father. 
if you do that today and this is your first day, would you talk to me after the service or, or one of the other pastors? We would love to talk to you about that. Would you send us a, a note on the app or, or if you're watching online, send us an email or, or con- send us a message somehow there. We would love to lo- talk to you about that decision that you made. But, but would you just pray with me? And if this is your first time, speak to God this way. Dear Jesus, I know I've done things wrong. And I know I need forgiveness from you. And I believe that you died on a cross so that I could be forgiven of every sin that I've committed. And Jesus, I believe that you rose from the dead to give me a brand new start as a child of God. Jesus, give me that new start. Make me a child of God. Come into my life. Lead me. I want to start to follow you and to start changing my life with you as my father and me as your follower. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb.